Hi, welcome to this video. My name is Phil and I'm a senior lecturer in astrophysics at the University of Lincoln. And I want to use this short video to just give an overview of what the meridian is in astronomy. And before we do that, we need to kind of define a few other things as well. But firstly, we need to kind of define astronomical coordinate systems really and why they're kind of useful, why they might be a little bit different to any other sort of coordinate system. So astronomical coordinate systems, they specify the kind of positions of astronomical objects relative to some physical points available to the observer to us. And that can be like local reference points on Earth. The Earth's obviously moving and rotating, or we can use reference points in space. And the meridian kind of falls into that somewhere as well as loads of other things that relate to the meridian and lots of the other videos I've kind of done as well. So, yeah, we need a reference point, basically. Now, Earth is moving, it's rotating. This is uh, quite a nice image, and actually it's something you can do yourself if you've got a camera and a tripod. You can just set it up, take 30-second pictures for a few hours, and then you can create the star trails. And it just illustrates, really, how the Earth is actually rotating, and you can see the stars kind of moving in the sky. So we need kind of reference points in order to locate stuff in the sky. Now, whether that's a local one on Earth or one in space, depend on the coordinate system being used. Now, to start looking at the meridian, we're going to assume that we're on the planets, we're on the Earth somewhere, and the zenith is directly above us. So no matter what time that it is, where we are, directly above us, 90 degrees altitude, is going to be the zenith. So as the Earth rotates, that stays relative to us. So that's kind of static to us, our local reference point, really. The zenith is always directly above us, no matter what. Now, the opposite of that is actually the nadir, and that is directly below us. So that would be like uh, a minus 90 degree altitude, I suppose. Not particularly very useful because we can't see anything there, but it's basically the opposite of the zenith. It's directly below us. And again, as the Earth rotates, that would stay static to us. It's our reference point on the Earth. It's not in space. So then the meridian is this kind of great circle of this line that passes through the local observer's zenith and nadir. So we're again standing on the surface of the Earth. We've got our zenith, we've got our nadir, and then the meridian basically passes through those. You draw a circle around the Earth and it passes through those. It doesn't have to be through the Earth, it just kind of goes through them. And then the green outer circle we have there is the celestial sphere. That's kind of, if we go beyond the Earth, the Earth's kind of rotating in the celestial sphere, and that's where the objects in space would be located. That's a different coordinate system, basically. But imagine we're moving inside the celestial sphere. Uh, we then have our horizon. So again, if we look out into the distance, we have a horizon there. You've got a north south, east, west, all that. So we've got our meridian that goes around, and then we've got our horizon as well, which again, these are two local reference points to us on the surface of the Earth. Now we now need to add in the celestial poles. So the north and south celestial poles. Now what are they? Well, we know the Earth is rotating, and as the Earth rotates, going back to that image I showed you of the telescopes and the stars moving, when you get to the north and the south celestial pole, the stars are actually not moving around in an arc. They're static, they're stationary, and all the other stars move around it. That's the rotation axis, essentially, of Earth, and it's tilted over as well. So basically, the meridian now is going to go through all of these points. So the meridian will go through the zenith, the nadir, the north celestial pole and the south celestial pole. And the reason kind of why the celestial poles are kind of tilted, I suppose, actually, is that it is, the Earth's rotated, or no, it's not rotated, it's rotating and its axis of rotation is tilted over, we know that. The ecliptic here, again, I've got a separate video on that, but the ecliptic is, is essentially the orbital plane of or yeah, the orbital direction of Earth. So as Earth goes around the sun, that's the ecliptic direction. And then Earth's rotation is kind of set offset to that. And the celestial sphere is a sphere around that that we would then basically have coordinates of objects in. And we're kind of rotating and moving inside that essentially. Uh, but again, separate videos for that to really explain properly what that is. So basically, 
Ultimately, what we have is the meridian is a, is a line. It goes from north to south celestial poles, also passing through the zenith and the deer of the local observer. So that's basically what it is. And why is it useful? Well, it helps kind of define the observer's local time position relative to celestial objects as well. So it's kind of a, a useful reference point as well, as well as all the other things anyway. So thank you for watching. If you enjoy the videos, find them helpful, then do consider becoming a member of the channel. There's extra videos in the member section, but it also helps support the channel as well. So thank you for watching.